Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the psychological thriller films from 2009, titled Possession. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie begins with a lawyer named Jess, looking through the criminal records of her husband's younger brother. Just then, she gets a text from Ryan, her husband, asking her to check her bag. Jess opens her bag and finds a rose with a sweet note from Ryan. When Jess gets back home later, she finds the house empty, and another door to the house is left open. Suddenly, she hears approaching footsteps, but to her relief, it turns out to be Norman, her dog. She then picks up the faint sound of someone working in the basement, and walks toward it. In the basement, she finds her husband and does this. Surprisingly, it is Roman, her husband's younger brother, who's fixing the fridge and who she mistakenly thought was her husband. Jess apologizes for this, and the moody Roman simply informs her that Ryan will arrive on the 1030 ferry, and wants her to pick him up. Jess heads toward the ferry terminal to pick up Ryan, her husband who appears to be a kinder version of Roman. After they arrive home, Jess is pleasantly surprised when Ryan gives her the old silver necklace of her mother. He tells her that he's fixed it, and there's paper inside the glass that notes his love for her. Ryan leads Jess to another room, where they find a cake with a happy anniversary note. Jess apologizes for forgetting their anniversary, but Ryan reassures her by reminding her that she'd been way too busy to remember. Soon after, we find out that Ryan had asked Roman to help with the anniversary surprise. Ryan leaves the room to take a bath, and Jess appears uneasy around Roman. When she attempts to leave the room, Roman gets in her face, and inappropriately touches the silver ring on her neck. He steps aside and walks away, leaving Jess confused. Later that night, Roman visits an old girlfriend himself, and here we learn that he is a felon on probation and is not permitted to leave the city. His girlfriend, Casey, advises him not to do something stupid since she doesn't want another incident on his record. However, the moody and violent Roman finds it annoying when people constantly assume he's up to something, and he slaps Casey before leaving. Meanwhile, Jess is about to take a bath when she finds that her sweet husband has already put toothpaste on her toothbrush. Later, she interrupts Ryan while he tries making a sculpture of her, and the two are about to have a romantic moment. The table isn't sturdy enough, so Ryan takes out his lucky coin, and places it under one of the table's legs, while Roman can be seen watching through the window. The next morning, Jess wakes up and spies Ryan picking roses for her while she makes coffee. She suddenly notices her mother's old necklace on the kitchen floor, and picks it up. Ryan steps in at that moment, and Jess informs him that her mother's old necklace has broken again, so the husband promises to keep it in a safe place and fix it later. Just then, Roman sputters behind them, and after drinking from the bottle, he informs them that they are out of juice and walks away. Jess expresses to Ryan that she's tired and scared of Roman staying in the house, but Ryan tells her that he has no plans of alienating Roman like his father did. In the end, after Jess mentioned how Roman was snooping in their room, Ryan agrees to find another place for his brother to live. However, they're both unaware that Roman is eavesdropping on them. The following day, Ryan writes a letter and puts it in the mailbox before leaving for work. Afterwards, Jess notices Roman packing his bags, and informs Ryan that his brother is pulling a stunt. She goes on to explain that he's not allowed to leave the States but he had packed his things like he was moving out. Hearing this, Ryan drives toward the house in search of his brother, and manages to catch up with him. He tries to talk with Roman through the phone, but Roman ignores the call. At the same time, Jess is starting to have a bad feeling, right when this happens. Due to the thick fog on the bridge, the two brothers crash into one another, and are both seriously injured. Later on, Jess goes to the hospital and learns that both Roman and Ryan are in comas, and that there are no signs of cognitive response from either one. Casey, Roman's girlfriend, arrives at the hospital a few moments later, and Casey tells Jess that she's not going to stay there long, thinking that Roman is still mad at her. She also tells Jess that she is just as sweet as Roman described her to be, before she leaves. Three weeks have passed, the doctor tells Jess that the chances of her husband waking up are very small as there's lower brain function but the doctor will keep monitoring the two brothers. 
Jess stays cooped up in her house as she struggles to comprehend Ryan's medical condition. She also gets her mail, and receives one of Ryan's weekly handwritten love letters, and breaks into tears. We learn that Ryan's job always required him to travel outstation, so he always wrote letters to his wife, and Jess will keep all the letters she receives safely inside a box. After a few weeks, something unexpected happens, Roman wakes up from his coma. He approaches Ryan, but when he tries to touch him, he is struck by a recollection of the accident, and falls to the ground. Roman is taken to the doctor for an examination, and the doctor asks him to say anything he remembers. Strangely, Roman claims to remember his wedding, despite the fact that he never got married. Jess gets a call from the hospital, and when she meets Roman, he moves closer to her right away, but Jess continues to feel uneasy around him. After further examination, the doctor tells her that he had probably lost his memory, but there's no physical explanation for it. The doctor also explains that Ryan and Roman suffered very different injuries, which caused them to awaken at different times. In order for Roman to regain his memories, Jess has to take him home, and the doctor asks her to do so since she is his only close relative. When they return home, Roman's odd behavior continues, as he appears distressed over the state of Ryan's neglected garden flowers. Inside the house, Norman stares at Roman curiously, and barks after picking up his scent. As night falls, Jess hears chattering on TV, and she is surprised to discover that Roman is watching her and Ryan's wedding video. He claims that he loves that part, which makes Jess think he's insane. She brings him to his room, and shows him all his things to help him. Roman tries to explain that something happened to him in that accident, but Jess refuses to listen. As time goes by, Jess is unnerved by Roman as he continues to act strangely, so she invites Casey to help him recover his memories. Casey walks toward Roman who is busy cutting roses in the garden, and she tells him that he left his jacket at her place. But instead, Roman says that she must be a friend of his brother, and he apologizes for not knowing her. On the next day, Jess gets a message from Roman, who uses Ryan's number to tell her to check her bag. She checks her bag and finds a rose with a note on it, just like old times when Ryan would do the same for her, and she's bothered by this. Later that night when Jess arrives at home, she finds her toothbrush with paste on it, and gets angered by this, as Ryan was the only one who did these things for her. She steps out and finds Roman sitting in front of her bedroom, and asks him for the meaning of his actions. Here Roman reminds her of the most endearing moments that she'd spent with her husband somewhere. Jess is shocked at how he is Ryan's memories, especially when he tells her she's his wife, so she slams the door in his face. The following day, Jess meets up with a friend and tells her of her worries. Her friend tells her it's not possible that Ryan had come back in the form of Roman, and he's lying to her. However, Jess is not convinced of this. After arriving from work one day, she sees Roman completing the sculpture that Ryan was making of her. He's surprised to see Jess there, and accidentally wounds his hand, and she gives him a handkerchief with a wary look. Roman then gives her her mother's old silver necklace, and tells her that he had fixed it just as he had promised. He wears it around her neck and walks off, leaving Jess flustered and confused. Afterwards, she decides to call a doctor, who hypnotizes Roman and tries to uncover his memories, and Roman recalls the details of the accidents with white fog on the bridge. When the doctor asks him to say his name, he says Roman, but adds that he saw Roman during the accident. As their blood flows on the ground and touches each other's, Roman wakes up and screams out Jess's name. Jessica then asks her friend, who happens to be a priest, to pray for her husband, and he tells her not to give up hope because she knows Ryan better than anyone. Later that night, Jess recalls the day's events with a troubled expression on her face. But then, she suddenly feels a presence beside her, and Roman stands up and begs Jess not to throw him out, because he's having nightmares, but she chases him off. The following day, Casey arrives, and takes Roman for a ride on her bike. Casey stops at the top of a cliff where she tries reminding him of all the things they used to do, but he feigns ignorance. She then tells Roman that she knows he's putting on a facade, and Jess would never love him because she was scared of him. She asks him to hit her like old times, but Roman simply walks off. After a year passes, Jess continues to visit Ryan at the hospital, and she's surprised to see his wedding ring fall to the floor. She picks it up and thinks that this is another bad sign for her. After leaving the hospital, Jess visits the ferry terminal where she had picked up Ryan. She turns around to leave for home, 
but she's surprised to see Roman. The two then get into a car, and Jess shows Roman her photo with Ryan, and she asks Roman what he whispered in her ear during the photo's moment. Roman recalls how they had seen an old couple during that moment, and then he draws close to her. Our future. Jess is stunned by this, as she eventually confirms that he's her husband. Finally, she draws him in for a kiss, and they consummate their passion. At the same time, Ryan regains consciousness, but it's all a dream from Roman, who wakes up in the same bed as Jess. As they are having a good time working outside the house, Roman suddenly experiences sudden chest pain, and just at that moment, they get a call from the hospital. The doctor informs them that Ryan had a seizure, that caused his involuntary body functions to weaken. Roman can't bear to see Ryan in pain, and suggests that they follow the doctor's suggestion to turn the machine off, but Jess refuses, as both of them have no idea what will happen to Roman if they turn that machine off. Sometime later, Roman is seen working on Jess's sculpture, when Jess approaches him with a positive pregnancy test kit in hand, and they are so happy to see this result. Just then, Casey shows up, and she's hurt to learn that the reason why Jess hadn't gotten back to her in a long while, was because she was too preoccupied with Roman. Roman tells Casey that his brother must have treated Casey badly, and she is pissed to see how Roman because Roman isn't acting like the old him. Before she leaves, she tries to provoke Roman's wrath one last time by shattering the sculpture he created of Jess. Jess tells Roman that she feels sorry for Casey, and Roman places a hand on her stomach, telling her that their baby is all that matters. Later, Jess decides to visit Casey, but she realizes that she's not home, even though her door was left open. She nearly assumes that Casey has hung herself in her bathroom, but it turns out to be just close. Jess decides to call Roman, and asks if he'll be available for the x-ray scan of their baby, but Roman tells her that he won't make it because of a flat tire. While this is happening, we see him tightening up something in his truck. The gynecologist then gives Jess an x-ray of her baby, but the doctor notices a rash on Jess' neck from her necklace, and asks if her necklace is fake or made of a cheaper metal. Jess tells her it's an antique that belonged to the mother, and the nurse smiles coyly as she suggests that it's hormones. After Jess arrives at home, she wonders about the rash on her neck, something she's never experienced before. Roman notices that she's lost in thoughts and tries asking what's going on, but she reassures him that nothing is going on. A few days later, the police show up at their doorstep to question them about Casey, who has mysteriously vanished recently. Ryan, who is now inside Roman's body, claims that he hasn't seen her in weeks, and merely says that she was troubled. From that point on, Jess starts to feel suspicious on Roman, especially when she checks on his previous criminal records once again. When she enters Roman's sculpting workplace, Roman gives her the lucky coin he used to make the table stable before. The following day, as Jess heads out for work, she stops by the mailbox and smiles, as she notices a letter from Ryan, aka Roman now. Later that day in her office, she decides to write back to him. Afterwards, Jess assists Roman around the house, and informs him that she's going to drop some of their baby's things upstairs. But then, in her room, she accidentally drops an old picture of hers and Ryan, and pauses to admire it. To her surprise, she discovers her mother's original old silver chain hidden behind the photo frame. It is at this point that she realizes the one given to her by Roman is a fake, which would explain the rash on her neck. Jess then discovers that the box in which she kept all of Ryan's many love letters and photographs has been broken into. She now realizes that Roman has in fact lied to her, having previously studied the pictures and letters to learn the details of their marriage, and stories to impersonate his brother. Unfortunately, before she can react, Roman walks into the room and wraps an arm around her. She jolts in shock, and Roman asks if she's alright, so she tells him that she's fine, and she'll be down in a minute. Inside the bathroom, she looks out the window for the fastest exit route, and keeps the bathroom tap running to ward off Roman. She realizes that it would probably be unsafe for her to jump in her condition, and attempts sneaking down the stairs, but Ryan, aka Roman now calls to her. He tells her of how Roman, his supposed brother had loved her because he'd seen her before Ryan. He then walks toward Jess menacingly, and tells her he'd like to show her something, before steering her in the direction of his workshop. Inside the workshop, Roman shows Jess a baby's cot and asks if she likes it, but she mutters an unenthusiastic response. When Jess tries to get out, Roman stops her right away, 
locks the door and throws away the keys. Jess finally tells him that he'd lied to her, and asks how he could do such a despicable thing. Roman eventually comes clean, and explains that he did it all for her, he came back for her when Ryan didn't. Hearing this, Jess implies that she's already filled with disgust at the thought of him touching her. Touching me makes me sick. Jess almost escapes after pretending to be hurt by Roman, but he stops her in time. Roman pins Jess to a work table, and attempts to sexually assault her while choking her. Meanwhile, Ryan has a seizure in the hospital, as the struggle between Roman and Jess intensifies. Suddenly, Ryan holds Roman back through a mental link that they got from the crash, before Jess manages to pierce him with a knife. Roman is stunned as he realizes that Jess has just stabbed him in the neck. He staggers toward the back, and it is revealed that he murdered Casey because of her suspicions, before he crumbles into a lifeless heap. After a while, Jess visits the hospital where the doctor tells her that Ryan had undergone a seizure, but he'd managed to survive it against all odds. Once the doctor leaves, Jess sits by Ryan's hand, and wears the ring on his finger. She assures him that they'll get past this, and this time she promises she'll stay by his side and be the perfect wife. Before the film ends, Jess walks out of the hospital, and attempts to wear her mother's antique necklace. But then she feels Ryan's hand as he assists her with the necklace, she turns around to find nobody there, and a smile of hope spreads across her face. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Possession 2009, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.